since I posted, um, I know that every video that I do starts out that way. So I'm hoping to uh, try to get back into the swing of things. Um, with some more regular content for uh, for you guys. Obviously, we're in a a different venue than than my usual. Um, this is the new location, so that's been preoccupying a lot of my time. But we're settled in now, so should be good to go. Uh, this video, I've been itching for an excuse to do this um, for like a year and a half now. Um, basically. I had started what was intended to be a series of videos a while back called, it was going to be my Codger Classics um, series of, of videos. Not really reviews, just sort of the same thing I do with other blends um, or other pipes or whatever. Just, you know, my take, my experience. Um, I'm not um, trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel or, or make myself out to be some kind of authority. I'm a guy. That likes to smoke pipes and I like to try things so hopefully um, <clears throat> you'll find this interesting I have done a little digging in the past on us on this particular blend uh, as far as looking for opinions and, and haven't seen a whole lot so um, this is something I'm really excited to try um, I think the first video I did was either Prince Albert or half and half not 100% on that um, certainly both of those are good blends, but um, uh, yeah. So I'm trying something new today that I've never, I've never even opened this tin. So this should be fun. I'm gonna open it here. Uh, I got it uh, as a gift, I think, for Christmas like two years ago or something. And I've been looking for a good reason to open it, and uh, I think now's the time. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be taking a look at Granger. Granger gets mentioned um, amongst the you know old guard of drugstore blends, Carter Hall, Captain Black, things like that. It's one of those kinds of blends. It's been, uh, apparently very popular. Um, I've never tried it. I've never even been around somebody that was smoking it, so this should be interesting. There's not really anything descriptive on the tin um, as far as what the content is or what you can expect. The only non-required piece of information, such as the name of the blend or who manufactures it or you know FDA warnings and so on and so forth the only thing that's on there is under the logo it says a pointer on fine tobacco so we're going to take it uh, one step further and actually get an idea about what it's like so I'm going to go ahead and pop the can it's got a you know spring top lid so we're going to go ahead and do that It's very raisiny um, smelling. Um, good moisture content. Um, citrusy also, which is not what I would have necessarily guessed. I don't know if you can see that. But clearly it's a burly blend. Um, I've seen information online about different people having opinions about what it tastes like, I've heard. From everything from it doesn't have any casing, it doesn't have any flavoring, it's just natural burly tobacco to somebody saying it was like a cola or Dr. Pepper like flavor. Um, and, uh, you know, I've had people mention of chocolate. Obviously, everybody's going to be, their palate's going to be subjective, so we're just going to see what happens. I'm um, smoking this in the uh, first time I've ever smoked this pipe, also. I think it thought it was appropriate. It is a custom built recently rehabilitated by um, Briarville. Um, Rick Farah and his team of, of uh, pipe repair people, for lack of a better term, pipe restorers, pipe restorers, um, did a really bang up job on this pipe. Um, it's the only custom built I own. Um, it should be um, it's pretty old, so it should be a pretty good smoker. Um, so we're going to give her a shot. I'm going to load it up with some Granger and try it out. Um, again, I've never smoked Granger before. Um, it's a very rough cut, um, very moist. So this should be interesting. Again, this is the first time I've ever smoked Granger. Uh, and so this is going to be 
Brand new experience for everybody. Well, I mean, unless you've smoked Grinder before, then it's really probably not going to be um, a surprise to you. Unless my pipe catches fire and my house burns down, then that would probably be surprising. So. set that aside so it can dry out in that big can. Here we go. Hmm. By all accounts, all I'm getting is burly. I'm not getting a top note, I'm not getting a flavor. Just burly tobacco. Which is fine. <clears throat> I like burly tobacco um, on occasion. I don't want to necessarily want to smoke it all the time. Um, I picked up Cornell and Deal's entire range of burly flakes um, in fall of last year. Um, and I've tried those and found that some of them I really like. Typically the ones I like the most are the ones that have extra components. Virginia, Perique, Dark Park, Kentucky. Straight Burley I always have had a little bit of trouble really getting my head around. It just sort of tastes like, everybody says nutty, but I don't know. That's never really been what I've gotten from it. but. Maybe we'll maybe that'll change. I'll be honest getting something else other than the burley. I don't know if it's the topping or what. Oh, I'm pretty sure because I've, I've bought a couple of state pipes now and never having refurbished a pipe myself, there's always this smell that I associate with like an estate pipe. And it's not a smell that I particularly enjoy and I've been trying to figure out forever what that's, where, why everybody has the same perfumey smell in their home. And it's occurring to me now that it's probably the polish that they're using, which I'm guessing the, or the, you know, the buffing compound that they use, which as I understand it is either going to be white diamond or Tripoli or something of that nature, um, that has this sort of perfumey smell. And I feel like I'm getting some of that in the taste. So, honestly, it's really just that burly flavor. Nothing really much to say about it. Cool smoking so far. I guess you could describe it as a nutty flavor. Virginia has that grassy hay flavor. Um, I associate the flavor of Latakia with how I imagine the smell of a campfire would taste, if that makes sense. This is, I guess, not like the nut, but more like how the shell, I think, would taste of like a walnut. It's 
it's not bad. I would imagine if I would, were to be in a situation where I was going to smoke one blend all day and not want to get bored, or maybe bored's not the right word, I don't want to get palate fatigue, you know, um, get tired of the taste, this would be a good option. And I, you know, it comes in a can that's 12 ounces. It's almost a pound of burly tobacco. So if you're, if it's something you're not going to get sick of, that's a pretty good quantity to have in them. Less talking, more smoking. Bites a little too, if you're not careful, it looks like. Interesting. My preference of blends is typically leaned towards Balkan blends. Um, though I've been getting into Virginia's a lot recently. Um, navy blends and so forth. Sam Goweth's uh, Navy Flake is probably the best tobacco I've ever had. It's oh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best, but it's certainly one of my favorite top five favorites. Um, and this is very different from that. Um, another one that I really really enjoy. Smoking is Peter Stockaby. Is it Stockaby? Peter Stokeby? Stokeby? P.S. Luxury Twist Flake. The, the flakes come in this weird braided square. Um, I always think it looks like a little slice of toast. <laughs> uh, very good. Very good. Smells like bread pudding, too, which is interesting. Uh, excellent stuff. Bought a pound of that. Had to find jars for it. Only had enough room for half the bag. So I'm rehydrating three small mason jars full as we speak. I would be really interested to smoke this in a pipe that wasn't recently refurbished because it occurs to me that I'm probably getting a lot of whatever materials or chemicals or compounds they used because I'm really getting this floral smell and flavor that the pipe had when I got it back that the tobacco did not when I opened the tin. It's really burning now. I guess cocoa that is there. Um, I'm not getting any of that cola flavor that I was told I was I should expect. So, this is settling into being a pretty standard blend. Nothing super exciting to write home about. Not bad. Um, again, like I said, could be a very, I'm sure, and I'm sure it is, somebody's all-day smoke. And it's, I'm sure that it has been the all-day smoke of many pipe smokers for a long, long time. 
Um, it's very popular. Everybody seems to really enjoy it, so. I don't see myself reaching for it, but it's going to be the only thing I smoke for the next few days because I want to get a hand warm. You know, I want to have a little bit more experience with it. I don't like typically to just pick a blend and then smoke it once and then decide, oh, well, I like this right now. You should give everything a fair shot. Well, anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, you can pick up Granger online. I got my can from Smoking Pipes, I believe. I've seen it on Pipes and Cigars. My only... The only downside that I can think of is that whereas your, your Prince Alberts and your Carter Halls and your, you know, Captain Blacks, all, you can all get them in like a pouch uh, or that little box pouch thing. I can only find Granger in the, the big 12 ounce can. Uh, I've seen small pouches of Granger. I've seen people with the little box with the pouch inside of Granger, but I've never been able to find it online. I don't know if it's because it's no longer made in that format or if it's just because nobody carries it, but get some Granger. Uh, if you like burly tobaccos, if you like old school uh, blending, if you like American burly based blends, yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this, and uh, thanks so much for watching.